Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is Ice, and in today's one, we're going to be looking at how to start a Twitch channel in 2021 going into 2022. Now, if you are already an established streamer, or you kind of know what you're doing and you're looking for either how to set up Twitch or you're looking on how to grow your Twitch channel, then this video isn't for you. This video is kind of more people that either have an understanding of Twitch, maybe they've been a viewer for a long time and they know how Twitch works, but they want to now become a streamer, or it's someone that has kind of just heard of live streaming and they are coming to Twitch, the platform for the first time. This is who this video is aimed at. Especially if you don't know things like OBS, if you don't know what that means, if you don't know what bits mean, if you don't know what subs mean, if you don't know what a chatbot is, then you're in the right place and we're going to go through all of that in this video. Okay, this video is going to be a long one. There will be timestamps all the way along because the reason it's going to be so long is I'm going to go through literally every single thing that you could have questions wise as a newbie. So I'm going to show you actually how to set up your uh, Twitch channel. That's going to be probably a bit obvious. It's going to be involving going onto the Twitch website. I'll show you how to do that. I'll show you how to kind of come up with some good ideas for names, that kind of thing. I will then walk you through setting up your page and actually dealing with graphics and all that kind of stuff just to get your Twitch channel actually fully set up and presentable. Then after we've done that, I will show you a couple of different bits of live streaming software that you can use to actually go live. I will also walk you through basically how to set those up in a really basic way. I will also give an overview of how chatbots work, explain what chatbots are because some of you may not know and i will also kind of give you a little bit of an overview about some of the terminology on twitch i do have a video called how to use twitch in 2021 which is on my channel right now that does have a kind of comprehensive guide and actually how to use twitch itself as a platform so like what bits are what subs are all those kind of things so you can go watch that if you'd rather but i will try and cover it a little bit in this video because the whole point of this is you can now watch this you can sit down you can go away from this video and you'll know how to do everything and you can actually go in the twitch stream which obviously is the point of you even searching for this video in the first place right so i guess let's jump in again i'm sorry it's going to be such a long one there will be timestamps, so feel free to scroll through and uh yeah let's get into the meaty content okay so this is step number one and it is the most basic step which is to get yourself to twitch.tv it is a very simple step and some of you are probably sat here laughing but a lot of people do get confused and they don't realize that you can actually access twitch from the web browser they think they have to download the twitch app which you don't actually have to do at all you can access it anytime you want to go by going to twitch.tv a link to that will be in the description alternatively you can just type it in. when you get to twitch.tv it will look like this probably will be on the light theme which is what this looks like so this is probably what your twitch page is going to look like it's exactly the same i just enable the dark theme because i don't like to be blinded uh to do that by the way you just come up to this little man over here in the corner and you just change it to dark theme and then there you go it looks way nicer uh anyway so this is twitch.tv this is what it looks like if you've never been on here before you can normally see a list of recommended channels on the left hand side and these are basically just people that twitch think that you might like to see uh, tend to be big streamers once you've been on twitch a little bit more they'll start recommending kind of smaller streamers to you there'll be any game that's popular right now so like apex fortnite anything like that you can browse here and you can click on them um alternatively you can click through here again it's the channel live channels we think you like it's just a load of different options or you can look through game categories so yeah very straightforward that's basically how twitch works you, it's kind of like youtube you just find something and you click on it there you go most people probably already know that but for those of you that don't now you do um so the first thing you want to do when you come onto twitch is to create a twitch channel again that seems like a really simple step and if you've already done this then feel free to you know skip to the next section but what we want to do is we want to come up here to where it says sign up now that's at the top right hand side of the screen so we're just going to hit that button there and then it will ask us for a username now this is where a lot of people kind of get stuck and struggle with and i certainly did when i first came to twitch but don't panic you can change your username anytime you want to it's just kind of advised not to when you kind of commit more to branding you've been streaming for a longer time because it can just confuse your audience and it can just be a bit messy so this doesn't have to be your forever name so don't panic if you decide you want to change it later this is just kind of like a temporary thing but if you do want to pick a name that you're going to stick with then I either suggest uh, using a old Xbox gamer tag if you played on Xbox or PSN gamer tag if you played on PlayStation. If you've just got a name that you go by, if it's a nickname, you know, something like kind of familiar to you or something you want to go by online, or even if it's like a part of a Minecraft server that you belong to, you know, use any kind of name like that. I got my name Ice White because I was part of a group called Ice Mod. Uh, I used to play a lot of G Mod when I was younger. So my name always used to be Ice Cubed, but when I came to Twitch, that was taken. And so I was kind of thinking, what is the color of ice? I guess it's translucent, but that sounds stupid. So I was like, it's kind of close to white. Uh, the traditional spelling of white was taken too. So then that's how I became Ice White because it's ice and the color of ice is white. Um, so then, yeah, that's basically it. So kind of simple. It's kind of how I got my name. So you can do something crazy like that if you want to get creative. But yeah, so username can be whatever you want it to be. I'm going to to call it something weird and that weird thing is going to be apples uh apples and bananas well one two three one two three four five 
my goodness. All right, there's a lot of people that have apples and bananas. Um, but yeah, there we go. So a weird username, just a username that we decided to pick. Again, we can change that later. Password, obviously any password that you want. Uh, Twitch are a little bit funny, so you need to make sure it is secure. If it's not secure, so if I type in something like password, um, it will say it's too weak, it's too easy to guess, and it, will, it won't let you create your account. So you need to make sure that you have a strong password. Again, it can be a bit of a pain in the ass. Maybe you need to make up a brand new password that you don't use anywhere else. So there you go. As you can see, I've made a password and it's now saying it's fair. It's good, but it can be better. Fair, it's fair enough. We don't need to worry about that. And then I just need to type it again. Sweet. And then obviously you have to specify your date of birth. If you don't know, you have to be 13 years or older to stream on Twitch. So if you're younger than that, I'm sorry. I wouldn't advise making an account because I had a few friends that basically create their account before they were 13, which did eventually find out when they wanted to apply for partner and stuff like that, and then their account got permanently banned. That was the end of that story. So yeah, you need to make sure that you are over the age of 13 if you're doing this. Boom. Okay, once you've done that, it will ask you to verify your email address. Just to do that, you just go over to your email, and you go back over to your web browser, and then just paste it in. And it's super, super straightforward. There we go. The email address is verified, and then we can log into Apples and Bananas 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Perfect! Welcome to Twitch! We did it! Awesome. Okay, so this is now Twitch. We've now created our account. Again, it's just going to ask you what you're into, so then it can kind of give you some recommendations. I'm just going to choose Fortnite, just chatting GTA, just for now, and I'm just going to hit done. Nice and simple. So once you're signed in, your account will look like this. You'll notice that you'll have a lovely profile picture, probably with any color. It might not be uh, so many pink color. That's just what mine is. This is my profile icon over here. This right here is how we can see our notifications. So if something happens, someone gives you a subscription or something or something happens on Twitch, you'll get a notification here. This is where you get whispers. Whispers are kind of like DMs. So like you, the way you private message someone on uh, either Instagram or something like that, same thing, but basically on Twitch. So that's your just little dashboard up here. And then obviously we have our profile picture. If you click that profile picture, that will give you a load of options. You can either appear online or offline. So if you have friends that you've added uh, to your friends list, they'll be able to see if you're online or you're offline and also who you're watching. So that's what the share my activity is. So if you're watching another streamer, they'll be able to see it down here where it says recommended channels. Um, normally there's an option that says friends and it will kind of showcase what your friends are doing. So if you wanna go and watch something with them, you can do. Then we've got our channel, which will take you to your Twitch channel. I'll show you that in a minute. We have video producer. So once you've actually been Twitch streaming, kind of like on YouTube, you will have videos on demand or VODs as they're called on Twitch. So that's basically broadcasts or streams that you have done that get saved to the platform. They will get saved for 15 to 30 days, depending. Normally when you're an affiliate, I'm pretty sure it's just 15 days. If you pay for Amazon Prime, you get an extra 30 days. So you get a whole month of those storage. You do actually have to turn that option on in your settings, which again, I'll show you how to do, but that's once you've streamed, it will save your live stream basically for 15 days. So if you want to go back and watch it or someone else missed the live stream and they want to go watch it too, kind of like YouTube, they can do. And video producer just allows you to kind of control either what the thumbnail of that video looks like, what the title is, that kind of thing. Uh, we've got our creator dashboard, which is really important. That's basically where we can see all of our statistics. So we can see how many viewers we had, how many chatters we had. We can keep an eye on how much money we've earned. It's where we can apply for the affiliate program when we actually got to get that email once we hit the main requirements. It's where we can see the requirements that we need to get affiliate. Affiliate, basically, if you don't know, is how you make money on Twitch. What will happen is once you meet a certain set of requirements, I cannot remember what it is off the top of my head because it keeps changing. Uh, Twitch will send you out an email. And if you want to accept that, then you can then start making money on Twitch, which who doesn't want to do that as a hobby? that's really cool you can also do a load of different things you can change your name you can change like loads of different bits of information kind of like you would on a twitter bio a facebook bio or anything like that you can kind of update that information on twitch again it's a social media so it's really really common and uh, like that most social medias will have that kind of thing and the same thing applies to twitch we then have our friends um so again this is people that you added as a friend if people send you a friend request it will appear here you normally get a little one red notification next to it um so yeah you can add people if you want to no one really does that on twitch i have not used it as a feature and i don't know many people that do use it as a feature but just in case you want to it is there subscriptions again another really important one i'll show you that page this is where you can find people that you're subscribed to subscriptions on twitch they're not the same as youtube subscriptions um so youtube subscription is essentially just a follow on what a follow would be on twitch so a follow is free it just basically means that you like a channel and it will go over here into channels you follow so where we've got recommended channels over here um basically it will then give another section that will say, you know, follow channels. Um, so it's just a way that you can keep up with the people that you like if you want to see them when they go live again. A subscription is actually where you pay the monthly money. So most of the subscriptions are $4.99, depending on the country you're in. If you're in England, it's $3.99. And what will happen is 50% uh, of that will go to the streamer if they're an affiliate. And it just kind of helps them, I don't know, like buy new equipment. If they're a full-time streamer like me, it helps you eat, helps me pay my bills and stuff like that. So if you sub to somebody like that, then you're just helping them out. So that's where they are. Drops. 
clips they're kind of like special events that happen on twitch so if you watch somebody's uh, live stream you will get specific items um so like rare unlockables so like it may be a new skin in, in in sea of thieves it may be a boat skin if it's something like fortnite it may be like a specific fortnite skin or something like that so if you win a drop it's which is completely random it will go to your kind of like drops folder um so then you can redeem it there we've got our settings which we'll go over again in a second it's just your general channel settings and then we have the language where you can change your language and that is pretty much it so this is this tiny little bar over here hopefully that will make sense again if you need to skip through any part of this video feel free there will be timestamps but like i said it's gonna be a long one so let's take a look at what our channel actually looks like now we've kind of gone over that uh, so what we want to do again is if you've accidentally clicked off or something you don't know where it is again you come over here it's the profile picture in the top right hand corner and then we go down to channel what that will do is it will bring you to your channel, basically. So this is where anyone that was coming to watch you, whether or not you be online or offline. Sometimes, obviously, people will go to your channel when you're offline and they will be greeted with this page. So as you can see, we're currently offline. We're not live streaming right now. So we've got like this little banner. This is a section that we can change. We can make it look however we want to. Again, um, this is just to say that we're offline. This section here, you can actually do a channel trailer if you're an affiliate. So what that is, is some if somebody comes onto your page where you're offline, say, for example, they've seen you on Twitter or they've seen you on YouTube or TikTok or any other social media and they want to check out your live stream. If they come to this page, you can actually put a channel trailer. So if they've never seen you stream before or something like that, they can kind of get a, a kind of like a taste or see what you're going to be like. Again, if you have any videos on demand, which I talked about earlier, which are your past saved broadcasts so like your live streams that you've done before they're just saved kind of like youtube that will appear here as well so if somebody comes on your page and they miss you stream they can just watch that and that will appear in this little box that says offline um apart from that we just have a few basic things like i said twitch is very similar to other social media so we have an about section but this about section is where you can put a description of yourself you can add a channel bio you can add links and stuff to say instagram twitter Facebook, all of those kind of things you can add right here, which is cool. You'll have notice something called panels. So very commonly on a Twitch stream, and if I pull up my Twitch stream really quickly and I go to my about section, uh, you'll be able to see that I have some panels. So what these are, these are some links. So right here is this is a donation. So similar to like I said, on Twitch, you can make money through subscriptions. Uh, people can directly donate to you via PayPal. So say, for example, someone wants to send you 10 bucks because they want to buy you a new game or something like that. You can put a panel in your description. So when they click on that, it will then take you to a donation page. Again, I'll show you how to set up with all this in a second. And then they can do that. Uh, or they can go to a website if you've got a link. So I'm, I'm sponsored by g fuel so if i click if you click on that section in my panel it will take you right to the g fuel page and it will apply my discount code for you uh, right now it's 30 percent off if you do want to buy yourself from g fuel you can do i promise that wasn't a promo it kind of is a promo but we'll just go with it so like i said before this is the description here and then we've got links to my instagram twitter and youtube uh, all of those kind of good stuff um, so yeah, that's what it looks like. That's the about section. Uh, a schedule, again, it's kind of like a calendar. This is a new feature. I've not really seen that many people implement this, but this is just a way that you can let people know that you're going live. And again, you can edit the schedule either in settings or directly from this little schedule page. As you can see up here, it just says edit schedule. So yeah, it's basically just say, I want to go live on a Monday and I want to let people know that I'm going live on a Monday and then on a Tuesday and a Wednesday too all at a specific time, then they can come onto this kind of like a TV guide and they can see when you're live and they can be like, sweet, okay, uh, apples and bananas is live then, I'll make sure I'm there. The video section, Again, we don't have any videos because we've never streamed before on this channel. Uh, but what this is, is where your saved videos will be. You can also have tiny snippets of um, bits of your stream that happen, and they're called clips. And your audience or you can take a clip. And it's a, basically a moment that's happened in your stream that's either really funny or something awkward happened or anything like that. And it's a little snapshot in time. And that can be found here as well in the videos. If you just go to this little drop down, you can see your past broadcasts and clips. And then the chat is a really cool feature of Twitch and it's kind of what makes live streaming live streaming. So if I show you this, you can see right here, this is where you would come to type in the chat. So when people are watching you live, what they can do is they can type you a message, they can send you a message, whatever they want it to be right in here. And yeah, that's how they communicate with you. You also have access to your emote. So if you see this little smiley face in the corner, so these are all just like custom emojis that you get when you're on Twitch. So you can browse through these. When you subscribe to someone, you'll see some extra custom ones. Right now, these are just the basic ones that come with Twitch. So I, if I want to, I can post that into a channel. There you go. So there you go. So that's what it looks like when you type. If I type something, so this is me typing. That's what it looks like typing. And again, when you're streaming, 
that's what you read, that's what your viewers and stuff interact with. Now, as I said earlier, I want to give you guys an idea of some things that you can do on Twitch, but I don't want to go too in depth as I've already done a YouTube video on how to use Twitch in 2021, which the link will be in the description. And it's also on my YouTube channel if you want to go watch that. It's a little bit more comprehensive, a little bit more in depth because I don't want to make this video too long by going through everything. But that being said, before I show you how to get some nice graphics for your Twitch channel, because again, that's really important. You want to make your stuff look nice. I'll really quickly show you some really important settings that I think you should know about just before you start Twitch streaming. Okay, the first one is if we go into our setting tab over here and then we go over to channel and videos, which is just along. This is the creator dashboard, by the way. So this is what I was talking about earlier. But we can see our username. We can see our display name. So what our display name is, it doesn't mean you can change it, but you can just kind of capitalize stuff. So if you want to capitalize different bits, so I want to capitalize apples and bananas just to make it a little bit more readable uh, than I can do. This is also where you'd enter your bio. So you can enter a little bit about yourself. So I would just say, I am an apple and a banana. Um, like that, I'll just save the changes. So if you scroll down, this is where we can add our social links. So for example, if we want to add a YouTube channel or we want to add something like that, uh, we would give the name. So we just type in YouTube and then we would just link to the YouTube channel like that. So if I did my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash C slash ice white like that, and we just hit add. There you go. That's been added to the channel and it's all saved. If we go onto the brand, we can change our profile picture. We can also choose what our, our accent and stuff looks like. This is just kind of more of a co cosmetic thing. So when you are talking or when you're subbing or something like that, you just kind of get like a nice a little vibe of what your chat window and stuff looks like. This is where we can uh, upload a custom background. Again, I'll show you how to do all of that kind of stuff. This is where we can set our schedule on the schedule tab. So when I was saying uh, we can add the stream, we can tell them what the title is. We can tell them the category that we're going to be streaming in, what time, and then the frequency of that. And then we can add that. So that's how we add that schedule that I was talking about earlier. And then the final thing that I want to show you how to turn on is on the stream setting over here. Under settings on the left-hand side is under stream. And that is how to store past broadcast. So if you come under here and you see it says VOD settings, this is turning on the past broadcast. So that basically means when you go live, it will save your broadcast. That's not on by default. I don't know why it's not on by default, but it should be. But yeah, there you go. That's how you, that's how you turn it on. Just come in here and again, it's the settings and then you go to stream and then store past broadcast. I won't go through any more than this because again, I have a YouTube video on it um, and I don't want to make this too long. But right now I want to show you guys how you can get some really nice graphics and you can kind of make this look a little bit better. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to show you was branding and how you can make yourself look a little bit nicer. Obviously, you want to stand out and it might be nice to kind of customize your channel, but it can be really difficult to know where to start. So I use a website called Placeit. Again, there will be a link to that in the description. I will be doing a different video on this later next week. So if you want to see a more in-depth guide, if you want to come back to that and spend a little bit more time on your branding, you can do. But right now, I just wanted to show you guys where you can get a logo and a banner and all that good stuff. So you come over to Placeit. We want to choose a logo. So as you can see, there's a load of little handy sections up here. So we can go to logos. We can either get animated logos, free logos. We can even get Twitch emotes, which is really, really cool. Or we can search for all categories. I'm going to choose the logos drop down and I'm going to type in Twitch just to see what they have. And then we'll just kind of go from here. So as you can see, it auto generates a load of different logos and different things for you. You can actually change all of this stuff, which is really wicked. But I love some of the stuff and some of the way it looks like it is pretty amazing. And the fact that you can just download it and you can just start using it straight away is just super, super dope. So I'm just going to choose any one of these uh, just to kind of fit with the channel. I really, I really like this one, actually. This one's really cool. So we're going to use this one as the logo. So once it loads, we can change loads of different things if we want to. We can change the background color to whatever we want it to be. We can change the accent colors. We can change the character if we want to. We can change the name. All of those kind of things. Whatever, we can change it. Once we're happy with everything, we can hit download. Now, you will have to create an account. And sometimes you either have to purchase the logo unless you've gone with the free one. Or there is a subscription where you can pay. I think it's like £14 a month or something like that. And you can download as much as you want to. I already have an account. So I can just download it straight away. But it's that simple. Once you're happy with it, you just press download. Like you can see, it's downloaded. Here we go. So we can click on it. We can see what it looks like. Perfect. That's saved. We can now use that as our Twitch logo. Amazing. Okay, where we want to go next is we want to go and get ourselves a Twitch banner. So we can go right over to the gaming section. Super easy. We go all the way over to Twitch templates and then we choose 
Twitch banners. Trust me, it is, it's so easy. It's, it's kind of ridiculous. So then from here, we can choose one we want. We can customize it. We can make it look however we like. Uh, I am basically just going to choose probably one of the first ones that I see just to make it easier. Okay, so I chose this banner because I really like it. It looks really nice. As you can see, I've customized all the options over here. So I've called this Apple and Bananas, 1235. Uh, and then we've got links to Facebook. We've basically got our names on what our Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Discord would be. Um, once we're happy with that, awesome. Again, we can hit download one more time and we will have that logo. I would spend some time looking on Envato because they do have some really, really cool stuff. So for example, if I go over to designs and we go over to gaming and I go onto lower third banners, for example, we have some really cool like animated banners and stuff that you can have on your live stream. Like it, it's mental. So when you're live streaming right now, you can have it pop up down the bottom if you wanted to. It just makes it look a lot cooler. They also have way more stuff. So they have panels and stuff, you know, what I was talking about earlier. So we've got links to other things. Um, so they've got panels over here. So join my discord you can donate all of those kind of things they also have twitch overlays which we will talk about in a second so these are for your webcam themes all of that kind of stuff just to make your stuff look a little bit prettier we can do all of that so yeah definitely spend some time looking on here again i'll come back to overlays in a little bit when we start talking about obs and that kind of stuff but spend some time have some fun place it.net link will be in the description let's go back to our twitch channel if we come back to our twitch channel again if you don't remember how to do that we just come up here and we go to the channel we can either hit customize channel straight away which will take us to the settings or we can get there by going to up here we can go here and then we can go to settings or we can go to dashboard so we want to upload a profile picture so again choose the one that you either got from place it or you can get one from fiverr or anywhere else you go here this is my latest download so we want to do this i'll zoom it in a little bit so there we go super handy dandy logo straight away it looks way better way nicer we want a profile banner well i go to my latest downloads and here we go i just upload this lo and behold that's successful beautiful now if i go back to my twitch page it doesn't look it doesn't look super cohesive and stuff like that but now we have a nice little background it definitely looks different than the one we had before and we now have a logo and things are good all right so that's it that's how you customize your channel i spent some time doing this i just did this really quickly for this video so i didn't really want to spend some time on it but spend some time make it look good make it aesthetically pleasing for you that's what it looks like branding is kind of important you know it just it draws people to your channel and stuff like that you don't have to do it straight away you don't have to focus it on it straight away but at some point it is always good to sit down making sure your branding matches especially if you have a twitter especially if you have a tiktok all of those kind of things. You want to make sure you use the same logo so people can recognize it's you, that kind of thing. But yeah, there you go. So your channel is now good to go. It looks really good. We're all set up. We have our about me section and bio done. We have a link to our YouTube channel. We have a basic schedule and stuff set up. We know how videos work. So that is a Twitch overview. That's how to use Twitch. That's how to set up your channel. That's how to give yourself a name. That's where to get graphics from. All those kind of things. Now we're back on the big screen. The next thing I'm going to show you guys how to do is actually how to go live on Twitch. Now to do this, you need to get yourself something called broadcasting software. And essentially what broadcasting software will do, it will capture everything on your computer, including a webcam. It will capture gameplay. It will capture your microphone, all that kind of stuff. And it will basically, through the power of the internet, put it onto Twitch. So I have two recommendations that you can use for this. One is called OBS, which stands for Open Broadcasting Software. And that is what I personally use. And I'll show you how to set up. And there is another one as well, which is super, super handy dandy. And that is called Streamlabs OBS. And again, I will show you how to use and I'll show you where you can get both of those from. It is more down to personal preference, both of those are really good. I just kind of prefer OBS um, because I've been using it the longest time. That's literally it. I don't see anything wrong with Streamlabs. Streamlabs is really great now. It's got loads of really amazing features. So both are great. But I will show you how to get both of those. Again, link will be in the description. God, I'm so good, aren't I? But yeah, let's move straight into that. Okay, so first stop and first up is OBS Studio. So OBS Studio is super traditional. It's kind of the one that most people use. I'm going to show you OBS Studio. And then the other one I was talking about is Streamlabs OBS. I am sure... 99.9% .9 of you are going to watch this video and you're going to prefer Streamlabs just because it's a lot easier. I've got all of the cool stuff that Place It and stuff can do built into it. And it's just, it's definitely awesome. It helps out a lot. So I'm, I'm assuming a lot of you guys are probably going to want to use this one, but I will get OBS out of the way first. So what you want to do is you want to get to the website. Again, the link is in the description, obsproject.com. You want to choose the platform you're on if you're on a Windows, Mac, or Linux. Uh, we're on a Windows, so we're just going to hit the Windows tab. It's going to download. We're just going to ask us where we want to save it. So we're just going to save in our downloads folder, and we're just going to hit save like that. Good to go. Again, on Streamlabs, when you want to download that, you just come to the main page, streamlabs.com, and it's right up here. It's just download. It will download for you. It's detected that we're Windows automatically. Boom. Cool. 
done. Both downloading, super easy. That's the only complicated step. Not that any of them were complicated, but there you go. Yeah, and then we're good to go. Once you have OBS downloaded and installed, you will be greeted with this lovely page. And it probably looks really, really confusing right now, but don't worry, I will walk you through every single thing that you need to be able to go live after watching this video. So where to start? That's a really good question. So this is OBS. This right here, this blank screen, this is where anything that you're streaming will showcase here. So if you're showing your desktop, your desktop will be here. If you've got your webcam, your webcam will be here down the bottom. If you've got some gameplay in the background, this is where your gameplay will be. So this little black screen right here is where everything will be. Obviously, we haven't got anything added right now. So it's showing a black screen. Down here is the scenes folder. Now, scenes are almost like folders that you would have in your desktop, and it's just a really easy thing that you can switch between. There's a default one already added to OBS when you first launch it, so it's called scene or scenes. And then you can add a new one anytime you want to. So you come down here to this little plus arrow and you press this. So we're gonna call this uh, just chatting. So this will be a scene where my webcam will be super full, very similar to the one that you've seen in this video. Uh, where I would talk to the screen, basically. So that's will be our just chatting scene. We will add another one called BRB because streamers do need to pee sometimes. So we'll put that one on so that be, no, people know that you're going to come back, basically. So we've got that added. Uh, we want an ending scene. Uh, so when you end the stream, you can sit there where you're trying to find someone to raid or something. And then this one, we're just going to rename it to gaming. So we're going to call that to gaming. So this is what our main scene will be when we're playing video games. So once we've got all of these scenes created, like I said, they're just kind of like folders. So each scene will have their own thing on the screen basically so gaming can have our desktop and a webcam down here just any would have the face super blown up brb would have a brb right back screen an ending would have a you guessed it an ending screen so this is looking super boring right now and we actually want to add some things so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to go to the little sources box uh, right down the bottom and so this is where we can add like i said webcam anything like that we're just going to come here and we're just going to hit the plus down the bottom and we're going to add a video capture device to start with so this will be our webcam so we're going to create a new one and we're going to call it webcam labeling stuff just makes it easier you don't have to you can call it whatever you want but again if you just want to find stuff easier just call it webcam then once that comes up you'll be able to select from a different load of webcams as you can see this is my face on my uh c922 obviously it looks a little bit different different a little bit of a different angle too but yeah we can choose this we can set a custom resolution if we want to we can set that to 1920 by 1080 and that will make the webcam really 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 big don't worry about any of this stuff. FPS, just let, leave it on match output. That's all fine. And there we go. We have our first thing added to OBS. And this is super blurry. It is crazy. It looks really awkward as well, but we can make this a little bit smaller. If you want to, and you want to make the webcam size a little bit different. So as you can see, mine's kind of like more slanted. You can press and hold alt and you come here and you can drag it and it'll actually crop things in. That's a super, super handy OBS trick. And a lot, a lot of people know that. So I've just saved your life. There we go. So we got a webcam. Again, this is our gaming scene. So we want to be showcasing what we're gaming so we're just going to leave this down the bottom here like that we're just going to come back over here and we're going to add something new so what we want to do is we want to do either a game capture or display capture i prefer to use display capture now some people will say you don't get the same fps uh in a game if you're doing display capture over game capture and also it will show you every single thing on your display so if there's some things you want to hide you've got some personal information and you only want to be playing showing the game then choose game capture i like to switch between stuff because i do just chatting scenes quite a lot so i like to showcase what i've got going on my uh, desktop and stuff like that so i tend to go for display capture uh so what we're going to do is we're just going to do a new display capture and then we can choose whichever monitor we want i will choose monitor number one so as as you can see we now have a display capture you may have noticed that my webcam is gone but that's okay that's just because the display capture is above my webcam if i just drag that there we go now we can see the webcam down here so this is the thing that is displaying on my desktop as you can see because we've got obs open we have this amazing mirror effect like that but if we open something else so if i open back the web browser and i make it a little bit smaller you can see that this will actually be brought up as well onto the page. So you can see anything that we have on the desktop appears here. Obviously, you wouldn't normally have this crazy long mirror effect because you'd just be showcasing something else. But yeah, there you go. So that's how you add that. Again, if you need to add any other kind of sounds, it's important to mute. Sometimes you may see this. You may get like a webcam output. So your webcam also has a microphone. If you ever notice you're getting echo or you're ever noticing that you sound absolutely awful, um, then make sure you come over here and you press the mute button over here. Make sure your mic and stuff is unmuted. So that's your main mic that you would be using. In my case, I'm using my Shure MP7. 
so yeah, then what we want to do is if we want to add any more sounds, so say for example you're playing uh, with your friends on Discord and you want to be able to hear them, but you've got like a separate input for Discord, what you do is you come over to hit the add section, you would add a audio output capture because it's the output that's coming to your earphone. So it's coming out of Discord into your earphones. So this will kind of sit in between. So we're just going to call this one Discord like that. We're just going to hit OK, and then we would just choose whatever. So in my case, it would be the Arctis 7 Chat because I had a pair of SteelSeries headphones and they have a way to separate gaming and chatting. So we choose that. So then whenever I talk to my friends on Discord, as you can see, there is options here to change the volume and all that kind of stuff. You may notice things are a little bit loud. Or, and if you need to adjust those, a good thing to do is just to move these sliders and stuff. And you can control the amount of decibels and stuff that are coming out. I would say a good one for desktop audio, if you're going to be playing music and you've got, say for example, it's Spotify and you've got your volume cranked all the way up in Spotify, but it's too loud for everyone on stream, I would crank it down to about uh, between 45 and 50. That seems to always be a good little limit. So that way you can kind of hear it in the background and it's not kind of like over the top of your voice. The same as if you're playing video games, you don't want it to be louder than you are. It's a really good tip as well, um, giving you this one for free. Before you go live, when you're streaming, once you've got everything set up, you're looking really pretty, you got your camera, hey, how's it going? You got all your lighting going on in your background. Awesome. You want to check your audio levels because they are going to drive you crazy. Also, I realized I was looking over here in my other camera because I thought my other camera was on, but it's not. So I got to look in this camera. <laughs> um, when you're going live, you want to make sure the audio sounds good. So what you can do is you can get everything set up. You can get your music playing, maybe your game in the background, and you come over here to where it says start recording. Now, what this will do is it will start a record, but it won't put you live. That will then save to your videos folder on your in your file explorer. So in your PC, it will save to your videos folder. Once you go there, just listen to it back. Make sure the audio sounds good. Make sure the music isn't too big for your voice. Isn't too big. And make sure the music isn't too loud for your voice. What I normally do is say like, test, 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 microphone test. Yo guys, how's it going? Welcome to the live stream, blah, blah, blah. Just any kind of old rubbish, just so you can listen to it back and make sure it sounds good. Make sure it looks good. So then that way, before you go live, you haven't got any mistakes. So you're like, you're accidentally muted or anything like that. Trust me, that saves a life. I'll give you all of the tips. Um, again, if you want to, we can go to just chatting scenes. We can go to a BRB. We can add all of those kind of things. And then we're almost ready to go live. So to go live with OBS, normally what will happen when you first launch OBS for the first time, it will ask you to sign in or link an account. So you'll either sign in with a Twitch account, which you've probably already done already if you're watching this video. Uh, maybe it hasn't, so I can go through that in a second. Or if you already are signed in, but you want to stream to a different account, you can put in something called a stream key, which is basically a special string of numbers that you can get from Twitch in your settings. Um, again, if you watch my video, how to use Twitch 2021, I will talk about that in there. Um, and we can plug that straight into OBS and it will allow us to stream. So just again, if you don't know where that is or something's happened and you've kind of lost it, what we're going to do over here is going to go to file. We will go to our settings. So this will pop up like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go to our stream. And then we will see here, instead of dis uh, disconnect account, it will ask us to connect our account. What we'll do is we'll just tap that. That will allow us to sign in. That will connect OBS with your account. And then when you press this start stream button, it will actually broadcast to you over on apples and bananas. Okay, so once we have Streamlabs installed, very similar to OBS, it works pretty much exactly the same way. It will ask you to sign in. Obviously, we can sign in with a Twitch account, a YouTube account, or a Facebook Live account. Or if there's another platform that you want to go on, so like TikTok or DLive or anything like that, you can do. We're going to choose Twitch because that's the app that we're currently using. So we click on the handy dandy Twitch logo like that. It will then ask us to type in our username and password. So apples and bananas. Uh, one, two, three, five, and then typing in the password, which I cannot tell you, otherwise I'd have to kill you. Uh, and we're going to log in. And then once we're logged in, it's going to send us a verification code to our email address, which we have grabbed. And we're just going to put that in. And then once that's accepted, we're going to hit authorize. Now, this is perfectly fine to do. You're allowed to do that. You can read through what it's asking to do, but it is A-OK. -okay. It's all good. So we're going to hit authorize. Once that is done, we will be connected. As you can see, so similar to OBS. If you haven't watched the OBS section and you've just skipped to this bit, go back and watch it because I showed you how to set it all up. It's exactly the same. We've got our scene that we want here. We've got our scene section, which is essentially like our folders. And then we've got our sources, which are the things that are inside the folders, i.e. the webcams, the like anything you've got, the microphones, all that kind of stuff that are all in there like that. But the really cool thing and the thing I think that you're going to like about Streamlabs is it has got a ton of features that make Streamlabs OBS 
way cooler, which I think is the reason why you guys will like it. And that is being able to install themes. So like I said before, when we were on Nanvato, you can get things called overlays. So overlays are like really cool things that go around your webcam or they are in the background of your scenes and they just make your stream basically look better. But the amazing thing is Streamlabs OBS has a load built in. So what we do is we go over here to the side and we go to the left hand side. Like I said, I encourage you to go check all this stuff out for yourself, but this is just a simple how to. Um, and we can find a load of themes that we can get plugged in. Now, these themes that we have right here, most of them are paid for and you have to sign up and you have to sign up to Streamlabs Prime if you want to use them, but there are a load of free ones. So if you want to find the free ones, you'd literally just search by free and then it will bring them up. So as you can see, these are a load of really cool scenes. So I said about a starting soon screen. I said about a BRB scene in case you need to pee. All of that kind of stuff. You can get all of this stuff just added in for you super easily. So we can choose anything that we want. So here's one that's got like a really nifty webcam border. This is the game Realm Royale, if you've never played that, by the way. It's really good. Uh, we get a starting soon screen. We get an offline screen. We get a starting scene. And we also get a webcam overlay and stuff for free and a chat overlay, which is really cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to install this. And as you can see, it's just saying it's installed. Once this is done, it will automatically open back in the editor. And as you can see, we have a load of free scenes, which is super, super awesome. So we have the starting soon screen. We have a live scene, so this is where we can put our webcam if we wanted to. We can put our chat here. You can put your name in there. We get our BRB screen, so if you need to pay, really important. Everyone loves that one. And we also have an ending scene if we need that too. So yeah, this is all for free. It's all built in. It makes life so much easier. So if you just want to go live today after watching this video, I download Streamlabs OBS. Go get a free theme or go over to Envato, get some themes and stuff from there. Just plug them in, set everything up like you want to. So add in your webcam, all the ways that I showed you how to do that. And then very similar to OBS, let me move my camera down here. You can see it just says go live. Now, one thing I did forget to mention earlier, and this is really cool. It's called an alert box. So this comes in built in, but you have to set these up on OBS. And I recommend you go and watch a separate video for that. Otherwise, it's going to be way too long, way too confusing. These come with ones built in. So whenever someone subscribes to you, whenever someone follows you, or whenever anyone gives you a donation or any bits, again, if any of those don't make any sense, you don't quite know what I mean by when I say those, look at my description there is a video on how to use twitch 2021 and i explain what a follow a subscription a donation bits and all those kind of things are if you don't know what any of those things are, i definitely recommend going to watch that first just so you can be up to date with the lingo but yeah i so when any of those events happen you get something cool uh called an alert that goes off in slobs you actually get the option to be able to test widgets so you come down here and we want to test the subscription so we do that as you can see someone has just subscribed amazing also someone has just followed so you can do really cool things where you can customize all these you can make these look amazing all that kind of good stuff. Again, I recommend watching a separate video on how to do that. Spend some more time learning how to use Streamlabs to its full potential. Learn how to do alerts, all that kind of stuff. I can do a separate video on that if you want me to. Just let me know in the comment section below and I will get around to doing that. Okay, so that's pretty much everything there. Super happy, super straightforward. The last thing that I want to cover, and again, this is just a super brief overview. I don't want to overwhelm you too much, but the last thing I recommend doing before you go live is getting something called a chatbot. So final thing, I promise we're in the home stretch. Uh, the last thing I want to tell you guys is a chatbot. Now, what a chatbot is, it's kind of like an automatic moderator. Also has like a load of cool features. It sits in your channel all the time. So say, for example, you want to do a quick link to your YouTube channel. You can do exclamation point YouTube in your chat. Like I showed you earlier, right at the very start of the, big, uh, the video where your chat is. Uh, you can do that. And what the chatbot will do, it will go fetch and paste in your YouTube link. So it just makes things a lot a lot more automated, a lot easier. If someone comes in there spamming a load of things, your chatbot can ban them. You can do some really fun games, all that kind of stuff. So the one that I recommend using is Stream Elements. It's the one I personally use. There are a load of other ones out there. There is one called uh, Nightbot Streamlabs even has their own chatbot and stuff. If you want to use that. I'd recommend, like I said, for all of these other things, reading more around on the subject, Googling it, watch some YouTube videos, kind of understand how they work. I will give you a brief overview on this one and show you some of the features and just show you some basic stuff that you can do just so you can go live today after watching this if you want to. Um, so yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to streamelements.com. We're going to sign in with our Twitch account because we're already signed into the browser. It's going to already prompt us to authorize. You may not get this. You may just have to log in. We are going to let this uh, have authorization to the Twitch account. So we're just going to hit yes, authorize. We do want to do that. Um, and then what Stream Elements is probably going to do is probably going to give us a load of handy dandy instructions on how to set it up to start with, which it has done. So what we want to do is we want to activate the chatbot. So we're going to press this little blue activation button and it will give us some instructions and stuff that we want to do. Um, we can add in a PayPal email address. So say, for example, we want to get some Twitch donations. So I will just put in my actual PayPal at the minute that I have right now uh which is right there so i'm just going to connect my paypal account 
we're going to set up a tipping uh, page. So like I said earlier, um, you may have remembered when I showed you my panel earlier, right at the start of the video, I went onto a page, had a background and everything, and I told you I'd talk about it later. This is the thing I'm now talking about. Um, so this is just like a cool background. We'll just choose that. Wicked. All right, that looks great. Overlays, we don't need to worry about those. And OBS Live, we don't need to use. So we're just going to ignore these and we are good to go. So now what we want to do is we want to go over to the left panel over here and we want to go to the chat bot. So we go over to chat commands. There's one thing so we can see, like I said earlier, we can do exclamation point followed by what you want. So we can start adding a few commands. So let's accept these. Uh, let's make a new command. So we go over to the custom commands under the chat bot section. We'd add a new command. Uh, we're going to call the new command YouTube. Everyone can use it. And then we're going to uh, say the response is go subscribe to my YouTube channel. Uh, and then we just type in a YouTube address. I'll type in mine. Uh, if you're watching this video and you haven't already subscribed, don't forget to subscribe because I will love you for life. Uh, once we've done that, we will just activate the command like that. That has all been added. To test it works, we go back to our Twitch channel. We go back to our text box over here, our chat section. We type exclamation point again, and then we type in YouTube, if I can spell correctly. And there we go. Stream Elements has popped up. This is now, you can see it's all moder moderated. It's now verified. Uh, go subscribe to my YouTube channel over here. So you can do that anytime. Anyone can do that. If I came into this channel as a user and I wanted to find your YouTube channel, if this works even if you're offline, then your chatbot is already added in. Super, super easy. That's how you add new commands. And yeah, there you go. You're good to go. That is it. Finally, the video is over. I know it was super long. It was probably super confusing. There was so much to talk about and it was probably, you know, a lot of information. If there are any things that you're stuck with, feel free to join my Discord. I have a Discord dedicated for streamers. It's also a great community to the people that I hang out with, you know, talk to people, make some friends and stuff like that. Feel free to join that. Link to that will be in the description. DM me on Instagram, uh, DM me on Twitter or Discord or just at me in my Discord and ask me some questions if you need any specific help or just leave it in the comment section below and I'll try to answer that as soon as possible. Feel free to scrub through this video as many times as you need to just so you can either understand that there are a few other videos as well out there on youtube by other people and also i have other videos on my channel as well but yeah that's it i hope this video was helpful it would definitely would have been helpful uh when i first started streaming it should hopefully give you all of the information that you need to be a twitch streamer in fact to go live right now after this video is done so yeah i hope you enjoyed if you did like it please subscribe also leave a big thumbs up it helps me out a lot uh there will be more videos and stuff like this again i will be doing loads more tutorials and stuff so it is always worth subscribing uh but yeah that's basically it i hope you enjoyed the video i hope it helped out a ton. I love all of you and good luck with your streaming career.